Hey there, welcome to today's video. Today we're talking about the new Canon camera, the C70. I had the opportunity of spending 24 hours with the camera and I tried my best to put it through all the different settings and paces to see what I could get out of that camera in such a short amount of time. I was kind of thrown to this with a blind eye, so this was a little bit of a first impressions kind of setting, but I feel like we all been in that situation where you go into a new shoot and you don't really know the camera, so you have to adapt a little bit. I expect it to be a little more familiar with the camera because I own a Canon C200 and I have shot with many different Canon cameras before. And a lot of the things that I expected were there, but let's talk about that. My name is... First of all, this is an incredible camera. A hybrid between everything you want from a DSLR, from a 1DX, all the cine cameras. And I feel like Canon has been listening to the filmmakers and all the people using their cameras because they are, they're focusing on creating their settings to 10-bit, they're working on their colors even further, they are working on more dynamic range, which is really great. Even the body looks a little weird and especially a first impression. I was either used to the cinema style camera, which is tend to be a little about long or the DSLR which is a little more compact this camera is kind of wide and not long it was a little strange at first but once you grab the camera you see that that camera was designed to be held that camera was intentionally designed that way they kind of went a little bit out of their ordinary bodies and they didn't try and make it look like a DSLR they didn't try and make it look like a cinema camera it kind of became its own thing which I do appreciate. So let's start with some positives, what I really like about this camera. First of all, image quality is extraordinary. What they created with this camera is beautiful. It has that beautiful kind of creamy look from Canon that I always appreciate. It has log two, which is my favorite kind of log profile from Canon. It has 10 bit, which is always a plus. I usually film between the C200 and a GH5, and the GH5 does 4K at 10-bit, while the C200 only does 8-bit or 12-bit in RAW. I don't always wanna shoot RAW, especially for videos like this. I would appreciate 10-bit. That's where I kinda of got a little bit of a soft spot for the C70, because he meets right in the middle between my cameras and what I want. It was very interesting to really try that out and put it through its spaces. The camera feels really great to hold. I love that they did put a clip out screen. I do appreciate that they have multiple inputs into the camera for audio, which is always a plus. For me, a camera has to be as analog as possible. So having all those buttons, being able to change all these things and know where everything is, is always incredible. Obviously, because it was my first time using the camera or even seeing the camera, I was not very aware where the buttons were, and this tends to be one of those learning curves that it takes a little bit of time to get used to where everything is. The best camera is always the one that you master, not the one that you have. So even though I had this amazing camera at hand, I was definitely not taking the full advantage of that camera. It takes months and months of experience to properly be able to take the most out of that camera. That's something that I always consider when I'm going into a new camera, how much analog, how much digital it is. It's great that cameras now have touchscreen and all those things, but when you're in the middle of a shoot or if you're in a rainy day, all those things, touchscreen is not your friend. Something else that I also do appreciate in this camera is dual SD cards. You can never really trust just one SD card. If you're doing something very important, if you're just shooting a short film or if you're doing a project that you only have one shot and you cannot miss it. Having dual SD card will allow you to automatically shoot a backup. Having the opportunity of putting multiple SD cards in there, so if by any reason one of the cards fills up really fast, you start recording straight into the other one. Something else that is incredibly crucial, and I don't know why every camera doesn't have it, which is the ND filters, internal NDs. Every time a camera comes out and they don't have ND, it feels like a disservice. It's such a simple mechanism that makes such a big difference on filming. Hey, a little sign out here. If you like this kind of videos, you wanna see more. I make videos here every Monday, so you should consider subscribing. That's all. Um, back to the video. Now jumping into some of the negatives, some of the things that I wasn't too fond of this camera because like every camera, there's positives and negatives. First problem that I had with this camera, this was something that I didn't really found out what happened at the end, where I grabbed the camera and I went straight into shooting. Wanted to see what it looked like at first, so I just used the settings that were in the camera. I wanted to just 
see where it was out of the gate and then try and change it later. I shot for about 10, 15 minutes. Everything was looking great. Everything was straightforward, but the camera stopped recording and I wasn't sure why. Hitting record, but it was giving me this message to check the SD card. Check the SD card, and it was a very fast, very strong SD card. Luckily, I did have some of my own SD cards with me. I had to take out the other SD card, and then the camera started recording again into my SD. But I lost everything that I shot on those first 15 minutes. This might have been a problem with the SD card and nothing to do with the camera. I just thought it was a little weird, and it was a little bit of the experience, like one of the first things that happened it was filming fine and I double checked the settings after and it was in 4K 10 bit. I even did playback a little bit to check some of the clips. I ended up trying to format the card, but that didn't work either. Nothing really happened. Luckily it was only those 15 minutes as I managed to change cards after and everything kind of worked fine after that. That got me a little paranoid. I wasn't sure how much that was the camera, how much that was the SD card. Could have been just the SD card. Something else on cards while we at it. The slot is a really nice mechanism to open and close the SD slot, but something that it's a little annoying is that if you open them, both SD cards are now exposed and you can't record into any of them if that's open. The problem is that if you're shooting a long event or something like that and you have to change one of the cards by any reason, the fact that you have to stop the recording to do that kind of defeats a little bit of the duo SD card purpose. If you want to change or add another card, you have to stop the card that is already going. They could have even done two slots so they open separately or when you open that, it doesn't stop the recording. But considering the body itself, as I said, I really like how they made the body. And I do like that they put a flip out screen, but I don't like the screen itself. The screen felt very clean. It didn't feel like it was holding up properly. The back of the screen is also like rounded. Put the screen in there and it doesn't feel like it's properly attached. I like to, especially when you have like screen on, which is the kind of default setting for the camera. I want to feel like it's part of the camera, but it kind of stands out a little bit. While we were talking about the screen, it's kind of weird that they decided to put the settings for it. The audio input behind the screen, meaning that if you're gonna change anything on the audio settings, the screen has to be open. I understand that it's really hard to try and please everybody because people like different things and people have different priorities when it comes to cameras. So it was just things that kind of stand out to me when I was looking at the camera. Obviously, the camera has a lot of buttons and a lot of things happening everywhere. So they kind of had to find new places almost to put some of these settings. And I appreciate that there are at least physical settings for those things in the camera. I do like that. Overall, I really like the image of the camera. I feel like it comes across really clean, really nice. You can definitely see an upgrade on the image quality with these new cameras and the sensor did a great job. The stabilizing did a great job. I like how it performed on dark, what, low light? Yes. Uh, when it comes to low light, I feel like the camera did really well. Is nothing to brag about, but I do feel like the camera is Quite versatile. I feel like the camera has a lot, a lot of potential. It was a very stressful but pleasant 24 hours with this camera. I had a lot of fun figuring out and trying to get the most out of this camera. So I tried to do as many different setups as I could. I had some unfortunate situations with the camera. Parts are so great. The parts oh. are so great. 